next video. Thank you so much for being here. I'm gonna spend some time fertilizing my orchids after they've already had a massive flushing. So all the reservoirs are empty and we need to fill them up according to what the orchids activity is. The table is set. We can say that we've got dinner served. <laughs> the only utensil that we need is a jug. I am a fan of eating with my hands, but in this case, it would be a little bit time consuming to be using the hands, scooping up the water and putting it into the reservoir. So a jug is our utensil, but I think that the spread of the table looks quite delicious. So this is a casual chat, fertilizing chat with how I do it throughout my collection. In this bucket with the green handle, there will always be fertilizer in a bucket like this. So in here I have 300 parts per million of my fertilizer and today's dose of fertilizer is being served at 6.7 pH because I am targeting the calcium, the magnesium, the macronutrients, so to speak, seeing as most of the orchids here are in active growth, I would like to give them their macronutrients. On other occasions, I may go all the way down to 5.8 so that I'm targeting the micronutrients, but seeing as we are really trying to push some growths, finally, I've got the temperatures that I can match the fertilizer levels my orchids need, I am pushing the macronutrients. In the bucket here, I serve up plain RO water. For all the orchids that are not in active growth, but in any semi-hydroponic setup, the reservoirs should never be empty, the media should never dry out. So 300 parts per million gives me the opportunity to divvy up my numbers based on what the orchid is doing. Is it in active growth? Also, based on how big is the orchid? How many structures are growing? Is it one of those XXL size orchids? Also, the size of the roots is important. I may go to 160, but with 300 parts per million in the bucket, I am quite safe to be able to go the full 300, depending what the orchid is up to, depending on her size, or I can go half and half and get to around 150, 160. And that is all I want to do with one bucket of 300. And well, here we go. Instead of talking, they look hungry. Let's get to fertilizing them. And I will show you some examples. Very, very simple examples here just to start right out of the gate. My Ancelia Africanas, not in active growth. Not this one. So plain RO water goes into the reservoir. How much you say? Well, I know my pots and my reservoirs usually have like approximately six centimeters, sometimes four centimeters, depending on the size of the pot. That is the depth of my reservoir. And I know how much water in my jug goes into each reservoir simply by having done it so often for so many years. So what I don't want is a reservoir at this point in time to be so full that the pot is actually resting on the water. If the orchid is in such active growth and so thirsty that she can take it, I have no qualms about the pot resting on the water because the absorption is so fast, it's only gonna take a day. But in this case, as there is no active growth, just enough to keep that media from drying out. And when I say no active growth, I include root growth. I am not just including anything I see on the surface of the pot. I'm talking about the root growth is active growth for me as well. My Dendrobium inobulbum here, Munificum, no active growth, no active root growth, plain RO water. Okay, so let me just make sure that I have all the plain RO water at this point in time out of the way. Here we have Memoria Louise Fuchs, no active growth, plain RO water, just to fill the reservoir. Same with my Leopoldii right here, finally growing really well, and has matured this year's growth, looking lovely jubbly, pest free. Muy importante for this orchid, because I've been struggling with scale on her, as you can see. No more of that going on. The growth has matured. There is no active root growth, plain RO water. Now let's move up to some orchids that are a little bit smaller. They don't require 300 parts per million. Their structure does not warrant it. There is an active new growth right here. Amazing. So what we're going to do with this one because of the size of it, it only gets 160 parts per million. So I take a little bit of the 300, pour that into the pot, and then I take a little bit of the 100 and pour that into the pot. And hey presto, 
I've got 150, 160 parts per million in the reservoir and it won't be touching the base of the pot. Here we have another little one, same thing. Got an active new growth right there. We've got a growth that's matured right here and we've got active roots growing, full active growth on this one, but she's a small orchid. She doesn't need the full 300. So once again, little bit of the 300 and a little bit of the plain RO water. Now, I always go with the fertilizer first in these cases where I'm divvying up my 300 parts per million. So I start with the 300 and then I put the plain RO water on top because that helps me then to flush out the salts of the fertilized water and not let it just dry out and evaporate on the surface of the pot. So I target one area of the pot and, you know, and go with them plain RO water right over the same spot so that I can push some of that fertilized water down into the media just to avoid some salt buildup. And of course, even on warm, breezy days, if there's water in the crown with a sheath, I try to blow that out of the way. <laughs> Here is Francis Fox. Only active root growth. This growth has matured, but active root growth is active growth in my books. 160 parts per million. And then maybe a bit of plain RO water right over the surface there where the new roots are coming, just so that there's added humidity there. My Francis Fox roots never, never really look the part, even as they grow new. See that staining? That is not fertilizer. So she's always on the edge. She wants to grow roots, but they never look pretty. Here's Catlia Lodi Jesse I crossed with Skinnery. Two new growths coming. Yay, lovely jubbly, I love it. Now, very active, very, very busy on the root front. Even though she's got two new growths coming, I'm not going in with 300 parts per million. You can see I've learned my lesson. I have mineral buildup on some of the leka at the surface. She only needs 160 parts per million. I did in the past give her 300, but you know, I saw what was going on and I'm not repeating that mistake. So that will do for her. The reason I go through with the 160 parts per million is because I wanna make sure I get everybody covered that needs 160 parts per million. Because once I start with the big top guns, like the really big pots in the back there, they need a lot, a lot of water in their reservoir. This way, at least I get a whole batch out of the way. And if I need to then top up my bucket again, I know that all I need to focus on is one group of orchids. Those would be the 300 parts per million ones. Here's my little Catlia tenuis. Finally, finally, there's some movement down here. Hope you can see that. Very small orchid. Still, I'm giving her 160 parts per million turn the pot where I can do it without getting too much on her growth and leaves. And go over the same area with the plain water. There we go. Just double check that wasn't too much. That was a little bit too much and I just pour out a little bit. And we've got the balance established again. I'm sorry if you can hear all the traffic in the background. Very vigorous dendrobium here. Krista Erdman, but she's only vigorous when she's in active growth and she's not in active growth at the moment. She's just finished blooming. What we're gonna do here is just give her plain RO water. Very vigorous Cattleya Intermedia here. Also, at this point in time, has finished growing all her growth, but she's now in active root growth. 160 parts per million for this one. Coming right up. A slightly bigger pot needs more quantity. Now, it may look like I've just filled the entire pot, but there's a whole root system in there. The water will recede eventually, so this pot is not overly full. Even though at this point in time it looks it, this orchid is due for a repot. You can see how slowly she is draining the water out. Super slow. Due for a repot. I really should get into this pot while she's doing that with her root system. Very, very clear to see how slowly that water recedes. Yeah. Gotta get in there. 
another candidate for 160 parts per million is my magic wand right here. It has never bloomed for me, so maybe this year's the season. She's a small, medium-sized orchid. Very vigorous on the root front. Very thirsty now that she started her active growth because she's doing it all in one go. New growth and new roots. So needs a lot of water. I can feel how thirsty she is whenever I pick her up. Have another candidate here, White Bridal. Busy, busy on the root front. Her new growth isn't up to size yet. Lots of things happening with this orchid in my collection. So the second new growth isn't right up there where it could be based on the previous growths. This is the growth that started in winter and she hasn't really had any fertilizer up until now because the temperatures just have not been on point. But just now I put in 160 parts per million, not to burn the precious roots I finally have in the pot, but just to give her a boost and let her know that I see her, I see what she's doing and I'm gonna help her out. Okay, I have one more example of an orchid for 160 parts per million. Not because she's small, but because she's a very slow grower. So I take that into consideration as well. How slow does an orchid grow? Because if I push in more fertilizer than her growth speed, so to speak, then that's pointless as well. She won't be absorbing what I'm putting in. So Cattleya iricolor is by no means a small orchid but she's a juvenile in my collection and it takes her 12 months to mature a growth, <laughs> this one being mature in 2023, meaning that her fertilizer levels will also be adapted according to the speed of her growth. So that in my books is 160 parts per million. Whoops, sorry about that. But in this pot, the water level rose relatively fast, bubbled away and is now receding into the pot that means there's a great root system in there. She is not stingy on the root front. Double check, water's pouring through. That may be a little bit too generous for this one. I'm gonna just tip out the reservoir and put it back to a level that is more agreeable. Don't want any of my orchids to get obese, you know? <laughs> All right, here is an example of an orchid that does need 300 parts per million, but is not getting it. This is my little fairy here. She is not in active growth, not in active root growth. She is completely sulking. There's nothing happening here. I think I've set her back after all the abuse of the past years, but still, she still gets water. There we go. That's all she needs. Now, from what I can gauge all the way down the table here, all of these guys, 300 parts per million, all the perparatas are in active growth, in bud sheaths that are full, up to the Nobili, all the way to the Rincolalia digbiana back there, and the Amethyst. Active growth, big orchids, big root systems, 300 parts per million. So I've told you about my root size and how I determine how many parts per million goes in a pot based on root side. I have an exception. Welcome to the orchid hobby. There is always a but and an if. <laughs> and that would be, let me see if I can make some space, my Prostechia cochleata variety lancifolia here. What do I see? A bit of scale. Check this out. All right. You're toast, buddy. Nothing that garlic alcohol won't fix. Can you believe it? I put these out when the cloud cover started to come over and I did not see it. And here we are. Inspection time during flushing and fertilizing. That is one very unhappy scale at the moment. <laughs> I'm happy though. Pew, pew, gone. Right, so here's the exception. If I have an orchid that goes as nuts as this one does, it has a very fine root system compared to the top guns that we just watered with 300 parts per million, super fine. But the vigor of this orchid and its growth pattern, more eyes are swelling, all the spikes that it's dealing with right now. I'm telling you, this orchid has no issues 
consuming 300 parts per million and not only once a week, but at this point, two times a week I do this because the reservoir is gonna be empty in about three days. This orchid has no issues, always wanting a second helping. <laughs> Just making sure there's enough water in here because you cannot go stingy on this one. This orchid is not ideal in a French cuisine restaurant where the portions are small. This is the kind of orchid that you want something big. The rest of us would request a doggy bag. This orchid, nope, not leaving the table until it gets more. Right, so you see there is an exception in the rule of my 300s based on the vigor of the orchid, what it's doing, and then how quickly it also absorbs the reservoir. And there is absolutely no mineral buildup on the surface of this pot which would be the case if it wasn't consuming the entire 300 parts per million. If I wanted to go up to 400, I'm sure it could take it. I just don't dare do that. I made one mistake though. Let me get that orchid. I went down the road just like the butler in Miss Sophie's 90th birthday and just poured the drinks. But anyway, here's my Rincolalia digbiana. She is not in active growth. She is not growing roots. And I just poured 300 parts per million into this pot which honestly if i wasn't filming i would say it doesn't that big a deal because this orchid is so so vigorous that she can actually take it it wouldn't be a problem but because i'm filming and i'm trying to show you where i do stick to my rules and i don't cut corners this is what i would normally do anyway plain ro water now because i put fertilizer in there she's getting another flush because if she's not gonna take up the fertilizer I just put in there, and I have salt build up on the surface of the pot, I would be cross with myself. So, plain RO water goes into her reservoir, just to maintain the status quo of how this has to go. Right, this table is ready. I've done all my others this morning after their first proper flush of the season. And here we still have some leftovers. Anybody want a second helping? <laughs> anyway, I hope that this was enjoyable, helpful, informative, if nothing else, at least entertaining in some ways. Very pleased to have gotten this chore out of the way as well. I have to start producing RO water like there is no tomorrow because, yeah, doing all these orchids, soaking them, flushing them, and then also fertilizing them, really depletes my RO stash and it's time to start producing. Thank you for your time. Let me know if you have any questions. I divvy up a bucket of 300 parts per million into the ratios I need based on what the orchid is doing. The simplest way that I know how to fertilize my orchids. And check this out. Woohoo! We're going to be blessed with a Lelia purpurata and I think she is the Verkhoiseri variety striata if she is not mislabeled. Nope, she's just the variety striata. But yeah, <laughs> the first of two that I can see where we're going to get some blooms. Fabulous. Your time is appreciated. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition though, that you please stay safe and take care. Bye!